Hi, this is Miss Ann from the Newcastle branch of the Pioneer Library System. This series is seven parts exploring the elements of art. Each program will focus on one element. I'll discuss how artists use that element, show you examples from children's picture books, and guide you through a project to explore that element. Let's get started. Texture refers to the way something would feel. Soft, hard, smooth, rough, etc. Texture can be tactile, something that you can actually touch and feel. Or texture can be visual, implied on a, on a flat surface. Let's look at some of the ways an illustrator creates the impression of texture on a flat surface. The Lion and the Mouse by Jerry Pinkney. His skillful use of line creates the illusion of a soft texture in the lion's mane, perhaps signaling that the lion itself is an old softy. Lon Popo, a Red Riding Hood story from China, translated and illustrated by Ed Young. The illustrator uses splotches of cool colors to suggest the texture of the canopy of leaves behind the children. Owl Moon by Jane Yolen, illustrated by John Schoenher. Liberal use of white space suggests the smoothness of the snow. Why Mosquitoes Buzz in People's Ear by Verna Ardema, pictures by Leo and Diane Dillon. Repeated use of rectangles and squares create the texture of the owl's nest. Owl Moon by Jane Yolen, illustrated by John Schoenher. Skillful use of shading and highlighting creates the realistic form of the owl. The viewer can almost make out the form of individual feathers. Flotsam by David Wiesner. The high value or contrast in the fish's eye gives the impression of a glossy, smooth surface. We're going to be using line to simulate texture in a wheat field. You will need paper, pencil, and crayons for this project. Begin by placing the horizon line in the upper third of the paper. By having it this high, it appears to be very far in the background. There are a few stalks of wheat in the foreground. By starting at the bottom of the paper and overlapping the horizon line, these stalks appear to be very close to the eye. Fill in the oval of the wheat head with small ovals to simulate the individual grains of wheat. Draw lines from the top of each oval. This is the hairs that transport the pollen to each grain. Draw another stalk angling from the lower right corner. Finish it in the same way as the first stalk. Add four more stalks. By overlapping and angling the lines, we have added depth and movement to the composition. Color the horizon line green with short, irregular vertical lines. This suggests a tree line in the distance. Draw a sun and cloud in the sky. Color the sky blue using horizontal strokes. This adds calm and stability to the picture. Use a darker blue to suggest shadow at the bottom of the cloud and fill it in with irregular curved lines to suggest the puffy texture of the cloud. Color the sun with bright, even yellow. Go over the wheat stalks with green, then yellow, then brown. This implies different degrees of ripeness in the wheat heads and adds texture and helps create the impression of three-dimensionality. Using the same three colors, use short vertical strokes to add texture to the midground, which is the field of wheat. Try not to put the strokes down in a discernible pattern. When you've gotten the color as dense as you like it, come back to the field and add a few green strokes that are horizontal. This adds to the texture of the field and gives it movement. 
So experiment adding texture to your compositions through the use of the other elements of art.